Well, hello, this is Peter Combs from Bitamount.com and P.O. Combs Asian Art in Gloucester, Massachusetts. And today is Friday, November 20th, 2020. Thanksgiving approaches. I hope all of you are going to be able to get together with your families as much as you can and have a great time. And uh, we'll be doing uh, a video uh, next week. Um, um, I'm heading to New Hampshire for a few days uh, over the holiday and uh, we'll be doing the video from up there next week. At any rate, uh, a lot's been going on this week, and I wanted to get through a couple of things. One of the things I wanted to mention was that uh, yesterday, if you haven't seen it, we posted another video, uh, and this was about the auction results over in London uh, at the beginning of the month, around the 5th. Uh, we focused mostly on the results from Bonhams and Sotheby's. Uh, they seem to give a pretty good cross-section of what the mood of the market is and how things did. It was an interesting series of sales, and they're doing fine. And uh, the other thing I wanted to mention mention was that over on the uh on the uh, research department over on the Bitamount homepage, which you, I'm going to quickly refresh, you can get to by going down the uh, homepage of bitamount.com to the little black box here and reference catalogs and so forth. We've uploaded um, all of the upcoming uh, catalogs that are available presently uh, for the Hong Kong sales coming up around the 1st of December. There's some great auctions taking place over there. There's some really interesting things. Uh, Bonhams has a good looking sale coming up. Uh, uh, and including this one, this is an interesting catalog. If you're uh, into this, is sort of an esoteric genre, uh, musical instruments and so forth. And one of the things I've noticed is that a, a number of the lots on this sale are modern. Um, including the table that's on the cover. It's done by a contemporary Chinese uh, artist. And uh, this seems to be sort of following along with that contemporary Japanese uh, seated figure that was in the uh, sale a couple of months ago that brought you know $400,000, did very well. And I think this is a trend you're going to be seeing in a sort of an increasing integration of contemporary Chinese artists into these uh, 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 auctions that more typically are always antique. And I think eventually they'll be doing con uh, more and more uh, just purely contemporary uh, auctions um, of living Chinese uh, artists and Japanese artists as well. The other catalog that came up was Sotheby's has one China, 5,000 years. And it's sort of an interesting uh, uh, selection of things. Um, it seems to be sort of, a, not, not that they're cleaning out their attics, but um, there's a lot of things in here that are sort of in, in moderate price ranges. Not in the hundreds of thousands and millions, but in the in the in the ten to forty, fifty thousand dollar range. And there's a lot of material in here. A lot of jades are coming on the market. If you're a jade buyer, you want to check that out and uh, take a look at that catalog. The next one is a selection of imperial um, uh, Chinese porcelain at Sotheby's, which looks like a good sale. And uh, then important Chinese ceramics works of art over at Christie's. And we'll be doing a video on all of these on these on these uh, this upcoming sale probably before we before I head up to New Hampshire. I'll try to get it out on Monday. We'll go through these. Um, and then there's the uh, Springfield Museum's collection of uh, imperial jades and cloisonne. Uh, and then the Wei Hua collections of archaic jades. There's some great examples in there. And then over to this one, inspiring the mind life um, of a social, uh, 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 scholar officials rather. And this is a really, really nice catalog. There's some beautiful things in here and a particular focus on uh, 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 br bronzes and furniture and that kind of thing. There's a great patinated bronze at the beginning. And uh, there's a few familiar faces in here that I saw, uh, things that we had actually had years ago. At any rate, um, it's a good looking catalog, but one of the pieces of furniture that I saw in there, and I'll talk about it more when I do the video, is this. We've seen in the last few months that Chinese furniture, Ming furniture, and now Qing furniture is doing extremely well. This popped up. This is a parquetry inlaid Huan Wali cabinet um, that's in this sale. It is an incredibly rare uh, type of uh, Chinese furniture. Absolutely fascinating, and I'm really going to be excited to see what this thing brings. Very, very rare form. They didn't do a lot of parquetry work. As you know, they did do uh, you know, a lot of bamboo inlay on small boxes and things. This is a cabinet, and it's got, I think, a reasonable estimate of uh, $340,000 to $410,000. It was originally sold by M.D. Flax, prominent dealer. Um, it had been uh, exhibited and published in a couple of books. And we'll see how that does. But boy, that's a rare thing. And that's the kind of thing that's coming up over in Hong Kong. You do want to check it all out. Okay. Now, over on uh, bitamount.com, the live auction, uh, the uh, rather the, the global member pages, 
A lot of stuff was added this week. We updated the page a couple of times because things kept turning up and things kept selling. It was a very busy week. We had to chase a little bit to get caught up. Um, and uh, the live auctioneers page is loaded again with stuff. If you if you if you're uh, a member, you subscribe to the the access to these pages, you're going to see just how much is on there. And we are going to update it probably again between now and tomorrow. Uh, but we updated it yesterday. We updated it a bit the day before and uh, keep adding things. So this is just on live auctioneers right now, the stuff we could find. Uh, absolutely some absolutely terrific objects on here. And these are all coming up in the next, basically in the next two weeks or so. The couple are going off um, in later December, mid-December. But our, as you know, auctions sort of quiet down in the, in the week leading up to, uh, to Christmas. Typically, auction houses finish their last sale at the, at the very latest, around the 18th of December. They don't like to run them too close to the holiday because so many people are gone from Christmas through uh, New Year's. And the collecting money and getting things coordinated and having staff to do it is difficult. But at any rate, that's going on. And then the Sotheby's page is equally loaded up with stuff. And this was something we mentioned last week was that these, a lot of these are porcelains that they have on their site that are in non-Chinese specialty auctions. These are just Chinese objects that are blended in with general furniture line, uh, collections and so forth. Some very good examples. Uh, you want to check that out. Some of the things are, I believe, in New York. And then the Christie's page is uh, loaded up. We put up sort of blew up some big featured items at the top here and then go down. There's a giant uh, area below that of their online sale. They've got a big online sale going right now. Some good things and things in reasonable estimates. As you can see, $1,500 opening bids, uh, $1,000 opening bids and so forth all the way down the page. And then lastly is bottoms. You have the bottoms uh, sales that are coming up. The, this is uh, over in Hong Kong. And we're going to talk about some of these pieces also when we do the video because there's a couple of really, really rare things in here. One of them is this, this spectacularly pretty Daoguan period Famille Rose jar with the boys pattern. Uh, just beautifully enameled, beautifully done, uh, equal, uh, certainly equal on par with the, anything done in the Qinlung period. This is a really great jar, but is Daoguan, which I think makes it particularly interesting. Just a, a great looking pot. Um, it's got a big estimate, 150 to 190,000. They clearly recognize how good it is, but we'll see how it does. And the next thing I wanted to mention was this. This is one of the rarest brush pots I've ever seen. It's a Baidong um, a done in uh, Peking glass, probably 18th century. They just dated it as mid Qing Dynasty because they're they're very notoriously hard to date uh, a, a glass because the, the, there wasn't a you know a lot of a lot of differentiation between the 19th and the 18th and the 19th century. But this is a fantastically rare piece of Peking glass done in the form of a brush pot. It is uh, sometimes called these snowflake uh, uh, white uh, uh, clear bodies, but beautifully carved, great example, and has a big estimate on it. And I don't think it's crazy if, if you're a Peking glass collector because you're not going to get another one of these anytime soon. Seventy-seven to a hundred thousand dollars, and uh, so forth. And there's another great one of one of these flush. Uh, uh, f flush inlaid uh, pots with stones. Typically, these are uh, three more three dimensional. These are polished in and flush onto uh, 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 onto the body. Very very rare. It's a Zeton pot, which makes it particularly interesting. Forty five to fifty eight thousand dollars doesn't strike me as particularly crazy. Seventeenth century example, probably late seventeenth century. At any rate, that's what's going on over uh, at Bonhams, Christie Sotheby's, and on the global member. Uh, auction pages and so forth. Now let's take a look and see what happened over on eBay last week. Uh, here, here are the, the eBay uh, newsletter page items. These are the things that a lot of you uh, take a look at every week uh, because the stuff that we pull off of eBay that we look at and think is pretty good. Um, and nice things from both eBay and then of course Katowiki over in the Netherlands. Uh, they, their sections have been growing because they've been adding more and more things um, and they've expanded uh, their Japanese stuff uh, uh, quite a bit. The Chinese uh, objects are getting increasingly better and better and are doing a good job with it, which I'm glad to see. And um, let's see how the prices were. Uh, the first thing I wanted to point out was this, this really nice Femi Ver Kangxi period dish that sold over in Katowiki. This was a really, really pretty plate. Uh, it looked to be in very nice condition. The enamels weren't worn on it. Uh, I don't see a lot of fritting or chipping on the edges. This was not a big plate. This was a seven or eight, eight inch plate or so, but 
Very nice colors, nicely decorated, and I think somebody got a good buy. This is a nice thing. 431 euros all in and done. Um, but a very, very pretty example, and yeah, it was about eight inches in diameter. But very, very pretty. And then moseying along over to here. This was that huge lot of uh, Daoguan uh, marked uh, dishes, and the seller thought maybe they were, thought that perhaps they were mark and period. Um, I, I didn't think they were. I think they were probably later, as most of these were, seeing as it's a full set of over 20 pieces. But very well done. And they bought a they brought a price that they would bring uh, if they were you know a, a later not in the period. They sold for twelve thousand three hundred dollars for all twenty something pieces, uh, which is about right. Uh, you know, uh, uh, you know five to seven hundred dollars a piece instead of obviously uh, you know two to four thousand dollars a piece that kind of thing. But these were inscribed uh, uh, marked bowls, beautifully done, very very pretty, and they went for twelve thousand three hundred dollars, which I don't think was bad. For 20, remember the quantity here you're getting. I, I, I'm kind of surprised that he didn't single them out or, or do them in, as pairs of bowls, pairs of plates, and so forth. But for some reason, he, the seller is 77 Pud, who gets good things out in Ohio. I just don't agree with him on the date on them. I think they're really nice, and and and, and these are, these are hard to date. Uh, I'm not criticizing him at all. He's a good guy, um, and he's. I think he does an honest job with his descriptions. Just think he was off by a bit on these, but any it doesn't matter. They're really nice. They brought a good price, but not a crazy price given how many you were getting. And finding sets of these is very unusual. It's very hard to do. They obviously got passed down through a family uh, for many, many generations. Okay, and now over here to this. This was something that uh, the seller Hugh five eight. We'll get to his name in a minute. He, we just call him Hugh. Uh, he comes on every few, every a couple of times a year and sells things. He's a collector and a sort of a part time dealer, but he has a great eye. He handles top quality transitional period and early um, Kosometsuki Japanese wares. And he had a bunch of things up this week. We featured them in the newsletter page because they're always of interest to collectors. And he had this. This was a really really lovely example of. Japanese Japanese Arita wear, beautifully decorated, uh, 1660 to 1670, right about on the money. And it was in beautiful condition. That was the thing that was nice about this. It was in beautiful, beautiful condition, sold for $1,040, which isn't bad at all. Uh, that was a nice looking plate, very, very quirky and cool. I liked that a lot. And then over here, he also had this up, the rabbit on the rock, I called it. Um, this, this great big sort of flopsy bunny rabbit sitting out on a rock uh, beneath leaves, looking out over a, sort of a mist-filled valley with clouds swirling around him. The plate was molded. Here's a, a look at the back of it. Nice looking piece of uh, a Japanese uh, Kutani or Rita ware. Um, Ai Kutani dish uh, made in a Rita. Beautiful piece, sold for seven hundred dollars. And this is this is you know it's nice to see this. These Japanese pieces, when they're in pristine condition, can do very well, very well. If you chip or crack these, it hits the value by about eighty percent. All right, and then onto this, this molded uh, uh, worked with uh, a central you know spiral in the middle, and then crawling vines and rue heads rolling around the inner uh, inner cavetto, and it has these lotus petal moldings around it, done like lotus petals. A very nice dish, late Ming. Um, here's the back of it, a little bit of kiln grit on it. Good looking plate, and uh, it ended up selling for six hundred and twenty dollars, but. It was in very good condition. Again, condition, condition, condition. And this this particular seller usually his di dishes are in very good shape. He doesn't he doesn't have a lot of damaged goods. And this plate was I'm just checking the dimensions here. It's 20 centimeters, so about eight inches in diameter, roughly. All right, nice example, very nice example, and in good condition. And then over to this, uh, those of you that like China trade objects, this was a great thing. This was a very nice piece of early 19th century tortoise shell carving in the form of a circular box. Beautifully carved. I would, I would gently clean this up with a very, very soft um, a, a toothbrush just a little bit just to clean out all the dirt so the colors because a to good tortoise shell when it's when it's clean light really really comes through it beautifully and you can clean these up with a with, with a bit of care take it to take it give yourself an hour or two to do it right but gently uh, uh, clean it out 
and uh, the colors on this will really come out beautifully. Don't use any harsh detergents or anything, obviously. Um, here's a picture of the back of it. Nice piece of tortoise shell, really fine quality, and a lot of people loved it. It ended up selling for $1,877. It was about three inches or so in diameter, as I recall. What was it? About 3.75 inches in diameter. Um, yeah, that's about a big day. It was a ladies' table box, but this was a particularly fine one. And it was done in the manner of the best ivory carvings of the same period. You'll see these spectacular quality uh, carvings of ivory done from around the same time, 1820, 1810 to 1840, somewhere in there typically. Uh, and that was a nice one. And then over here to this, that little silver vase. I just like this. It was marked, uh, what was it, TS or TC on the bottom. Um, possibly Taylor and Company, uh, but very small, only about three and a half, four inches, and absolutely filthy. This thing is so dirty, um, and I would I would uh, uh, take some silver polish to it up, clean it up a little bit. Don't buff it, but just some silver foam and so forth just to get the heavy tarnish off to bring up the details. And I think somebody got this at a great price, $122 for a nice piece of antique Chinese silver, probably 100, 120 years old. But uh, a very, very nice example. Beautifully done. And then on to this was the, uh, well, I got the wrong picture. There we go. Is this uh, hat stand. Nice Famille Rose hat stand. Late Qing Dynasty. Um, uh, very beautifully decorated. Still has a bit of its gilding around the rim. Often the gilding on these old hat stands is gone uh, just, from, just from use and being handled a great deal. And um, let's see if we can get the rest of it. It had a line here at the top. That was one of the issues that it had. But other than that, it was okay. It wasn't, and that line wasn't traveling. That looked like that line had stopped traveling a long time ago. Um, sold for $510, which was a good price. Because, as you know, these are absolutely perfect. Without a line in them, can sell for anywhere from $850 to $1,150. So it was a nice one. And it was pretty. It was just pretty. Prettily done, as they say. Typically, these were also sold in pairs many years ago. So if, you, if you're looking around, don't be surprised to see two of them. And then over to this, this 18th century, uh, 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 it's a, it has a provincial chin lung mark on it, but it is an 18th century pot, I believe, from what I could see of it. Nice celadon glaze um, uh, jar with um, uh, underglazed blue and, and, and white uh, open areas, high outlining or, or white paste inlaid right here with rue heads and so forth. This was a nice looking pot. And the color, it's so, the color on this was so good, it almost looked new. But when you flip it over and you see this sort of V shaped deep foot rim with the, that sort of brown dressing and gunk all over it, and then this sort of uh, shaky hand drawn uh, chin lung mark, um, obviously not imperial the way they did them in the imperial kilns, but uh, a provincial, it's a provincial chin lung mark, we call them. Um, and has this nice iron red line around the inside. This is a nice old jar. Nothing wrong with it. There it is. You can see where the, the glaze sort of pinched and creeped uh, where, where it ended just above the foot. And it ended up selling for $1,713. And I think it was because it had these very nice uh, characters on the outside. And uh, it was beautifully done. And it was a decent size, too. It wasn't tiny. It was uh, eight and a half inches tall. It wasn't a little three-inch jarlet or something. Nice size and very pretty. Good color green. And then over here to this, the Nornia Straits... Uh, uh, porcelain hot food pot. This was a good one, and as you, as, we, as we've covered many times, these these pieces, these uh, New Union Straits uh, uh, Straits community uh, porcelains, have have just really developed a huge following in the last, especially in the last 15 years. Uh, they've written a few books on them about them about that about that the unique market where pieces were done and decorated in a very specific, very festive, very bright. Um, uh, style. Some of the work was a little bit folky the way they did it. And uh, for a long time, nobody really wanted these. Um, they weren't that popular outside of the Malaysian community in, in, in Asia itself. In the United States, they'd float around here. You'd find them in antique shops and they'd be, you know, a pot like this uh, in, the, in the 1980s would cost, you know, 50 or $60 at the most. They were all viewed as sort of late pieces and there was no, no understanding of the context and, and, and who they were made for at the time or very little so they were undervalued and today uh, if you stocked up on this stuff um, you still there was a shop there was a shop near Boston where, where the lady was a uh, um, she was a famous dealer and uh, I don't want to say her name but she had a shop in her house she lived in Beverly Mass um, and she did a lot of work with the Peabody 
on the first floor of her house, she had this, these rooms, this col big federal uh, col colonial house near the water. And on the first floor, she had the stuff that she just picked up from houses, and she'd have all kinds of Chinese things. It was absolutely fascinating, and you could get some amazing rarities in there because she didn't know much about it. She dealt mostly solely in trying to trade porcelain, export porcelain, which she knew cold. But the other stuff, she was, didn't know that much. And she'd have shelves of these Neonia Straits pieces in the corner of her of a room that would be like a living room, just piled up. And you could go in and say, oh, you know, we'll, we'll buy it all. We'll give you $200 for all of it. And she'd say, take it. And uh, <laughs> those days are gone. At any rate, um, um, this was a, a nice pot, and it, and it brought the price that they typically bring these days. And it still had its rope twist handle in it, which was kind of nifty. And then over here, speaking of Neonia Straits, was this silver buckle, silver belt. This was absolutely wonderful. They, they made belts sort of like this also in the, in the Ming Dynasty, usually with these big silver plaques and then leather, and then the, the silver would be mounted into the leather. This is just a pure silver one, but very nice quality. Neonia Straits silver uh, tends to be fairly thick, very good quality, nicely polished, and good details. And here you have the, uh, the peacock. Uh, or, or, the, or, the, or the phoenix coming up out of, out, of the, out of the flowers and this beautiful frame running around it and lots and lots of details of leaves and foliage, very profusely done. And you have a belt. There it is. Wear that out to dinner. And uh, it went for $541, which is fine. It was a handsome thing, late Qing Dynasty, uh, very nice quality, very nice quality. And then over here, this was, over, this was that, that Meiji period... Um, uh, bronze incense burner. We featured this on the newsletter page because I just thought it was a nice one. Very gutsy, big big dragons on the side, nice, you know, bowed legs, heavily worked body, uh, sort of a cash symbol uh, uh, gapping between the lid and the uh, and the body, and then surmounted by this 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 falcon who's got looks like he has a snake or something. Just a beautiful thing, uh, nice size. There it is, all taken apart. All the pieces are there. It looked to be in very good conditions. I love the waves, the way they they worked around the base, and it had an awfully reasonable estimate 450 to 650 euros it went right through that and ended up selling for 2100 euros which doesn't surprise me a whole lot because it was just such good quality but uh, it was nice to see and then over here this was also on Katawiki this I think was one of the great buys of the week we featured it it's a Kangxi dish eight inches or so in diameter Ended up selling for 152 euros, but it was beautifully decorated. Nice decoration on this. I really liked it. Um, a nice flat cavetto with these flowers just sort of dappled onto it, uh, not connected in a vine or anything, just sort of sprinkled on. And then this, uh, uh, the inner cavetto uh, outside the rim has little uh, symbols and so forth, uh, serrated leaves and fish and whatnot, and then flowers in the middle. Just a nice plate. 152 euros, okay? As I say every week, Leave a bid, okay? You might have picked it up for another bid over that. It still would be a good buy. And then over here to this, this um, is the, uh, 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 this this closed. I should have had this at the beginning. This was another plate by Hugh. It was one of the first things I pulled up because I liked it so much. It was Chongsen period, transitional period, um, export dish with a scholar in it. He also had another one I should have mentioned with a musician in the middle of it sitting in a Ming-style folding chair, which I actually liked even better, and I think it sold for a bit less, but that's just my personal taste. This was a nice plate. had a minor nick out of the rim, but uh, scholar's subject matter, holding his rue scepter, nice-looking plate, sold for six. $694. And uh, then over here to this, this closes um, in a couple of days is that nice little uh, Zhuantong marked um, uh, incense burner. We think it's probably a bit later, but it's, 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 a, it's a lovely thing. And I, it's, it's, it's doing very well. It's getting a very good price. We'll see how it ends up. And then this is something I wanted to mention. It's over on, it'll be in the newsletter again. It closes um, on Saturday. Um, and this is one of those practical things. This is a Japanese reticulated lantern. It's about uh, a foot tall up to the top of the ball, but a, a, a bit bigger than that all the way up. And it's a wonderful lantern. And it has been previously, um, it's got a hole in the top so you could run a wire. If you're looking for a great light, piece of lighting for your porch, or for the corner of a room in your house, this would be a simple thing to wire up and put a little bulb in it, and it would make a wonderful, wonderful lantern for your house. 
All right. It's up to just 120 euros. It has no reserve on it. 350 to 450 euro estimate. Um, if you could get it for that estimate, well, I think it would be something you'd really enjoy living with. It would throw a very nice light into a room and um, it would get a lot of conversation started. It's a great thing. It's one of those. I love stuff like this, something you can enjoy and have it in your house and use it. All right, and then also closing in a couple of days is this very nice Shibayama piece of silver. Uh, nice example, Meiji period, obviously, but beautiful quality. Love the dragons going up the side. And then there's a fat goose on the top of it, which I think is interesting. And uh, the, the, all of the work seems to be in good condition. I don't see any dents or bangs or dings or repairs anywhere. You want to check it out, though, to be sure. But um, nice photography on this. This is what photographs should look like good lighting and uh, you can see all the enamel details and so forth beautiful piece of shibayama and it's up to uh let's see what this is up to uh starting price on this lot is uh next minimum bid no bids on this yet. That, that's shocking 1600 euros buy it for 1600 euros it's a great buy um uh that's a nice piece of shibayama um uh, for some reason shibayama hasn't been getting a lot of love lately in the market i don't know why it is great stuff. Uh, it is This piece is six inches tall in beautiful condition. It's a lovely thing. Um, and I'm absolutely shocked it doesn't have a bid yet. I don't know where the Japanese buyers are. Um, there was some other Shibayama that turned up in London a few weeks ago, and it all did uh, fine. It all brought two to $5,000 and so forth. Back in the 90s, these used to sell for six or 8000 but that was back in the 90s. All right. All right. And that's about it for the week. There's a lot going on. There's a bunch of sales coming up in December we're going to cover. Um, we'll get a video out on that. And uh, as I said, we're all getting ready for our uh, uh, Thanksgiving uh, days and so forth. And I hope you are, too, if you're here in the States. And if you're overseas and you have Thanksgiving over there, enjoy it. All right. Have a good turkey or prime rib or whatever it is you do, like a lamb. All good. All good. All righty. And... Um, if you haven't subscribed yet, please do. Subscribe to us here at YouTube. Come over to bitamount.com and sign up for the newsletter and use the site. Uh, we've been seeing lots of traffic over there lately. The catalogs have been getting a lot of interest from people. We see lots of clicks opening up that window, and uh, it's a handy thing to have. I suspect people maybe are traveling and they've got it on their cell phone or something, and they want to browse some auction catalogs while they're sitting uh, waiting for somebody. It's a lot because we're all sitting around waiting these days, and uh, good news on the on the illness front here, and we're hoping to see uh, those vaccines get out very, very soon to help people. It'd be a good thing. All right. Have a great weekend. Enjoy yourselves, um, and uh, we'll see you all next week. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.